Right, here we are again, Mr. Ricky. Welcome to another episode of It's Cold In Here. Mate, it's freezing and I, I've, I've got a cold, so I'm gonna stay right and, back away from you. And you've got a, uh, an uninsulated head. <laughs> There's like frost on it, mate. I've got the sunroof open, yes. Yeah, <laughs> the sunroof open. So, oh. what, um, what are we looking at today? Oh, uh, this is an oil pump off a of Gallardo. A five litre, that's an oil pump off a of 5.2, but we get into that. Um, so yeah, that's what's on the inside of an oil pump, a dry sump pump out of a 5.0. Oh. And uh, here's one we made earlier. Here's one we made earlier. So, yes. Um, this had a little leak off, so there's two drive seals, um, and it had a little leak out of one of them. So you've got to strip it to get to the seal on the inside. And they leak because the input shafts, just start, the drive shafts just start to corrode, and then they just start to tear up the seal. So, yeah, we've taken it apart, We've had the casings vapor blasted. They're more dirty now, so I won't touch them. So we've had the casings vapor blasted because they were hanging. Obviously, it hangs at the bottom of the engine, so they just get corroded. What is it now? T nearly 20 years old. Um, so we rebuilt this pump when we did the engine. Um, so God, it must be two and a bit years back now. It's been a little while. Um, and he's just had a little, he had a leaking oil pipe. Carl getting in the way with actually doing some work. Yeah. I tell you what, I had a message from the guy who has the Instagram, my name. And he's had so many followers. <laughs> so, we're nearly there. Yeah. It's like a sketch out of Monty Python, isn't it? <laughs> so what are you, Carl underscore? No underscore, Carl Trevitt. K-A-R-L-T-R-E-V-E-T-T. -E -T. I nearly couldn't find my name then. <laughs> no underscore. Okay, so, we're back. Yeah, we've got some quiet now. My phone's on silent as well, so I haven't broken the main rule. Um, and I've completely lost my thought train. Uh, and you're talking of silent. Oh, you've got to do yeah. yours as well. Yeah. Hello, Davey speaking. Amateur. I know. It's all right. People think it's his top gear sometimes <laughs> with the comments we get. What did I get the other day? I was going to subscribe to this channel, but I think you were right arrogant and he C-bombed me. Did he? So, yeah, I thought, wow, that's lovely. Well, Considering my kids read this, <laughs> you, you know, they're like, Dad, I watched your videos and some guy called you. Uh, <laughs> don't worry about that. We don't need to know. So, yeah. Ah, well, horses for courses. Indeed. So, right, so. It had a, like the 5.2 suffer with leaking oil pipes, this one had a leaking oil pipe. So the main, main pipe that goes from the oil tank to the intake on the oil pump, um, where, they, where the flexi joins the main pipe and it's flanged, they just start to leak. So it started to leak. But we've got to take the pump off to get the pipe out. We've got to pretty much jack the engine up to get the pipe out. So we may as well address this leak at the same time. So. Yeah, we waited eight weeks for that pipe. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Eight weeks from Lambo for an oil pipe. Honestly, it's getting ridiculous. I spoke to a client the other day who's waiting for a right-hand shift paddle off a steering wheel and he's been waiting six months. What's going on in the world, mate? It's ridiculous. It's gone mad. It is affecting everything though, isn't it? You, you talk to yeah. friends in the building trade and stuff, you get that, but... Yeah, but paddles ain't made of plasterboard and wood. <laughs> like, hopefully, hopefully not. <laughs> So yeah, it's getting, it's getting silly, it's getting silly, let alone not being able to get cars. Cars only come in with one key, brand new now. You know, we're, we're starting to struggle to get certain parts. So anyway, came with an oil leak, oil drive seal, oil pipe, and then this little drive seal leak in. So we've got seals, we just thought we'd strip it and service a pump. So it kind of all... Yeah. Get told off now. I'm wearing gloves this time. I had comments about that. So it all kind of sits together. That's one. Can't remember how it goes now. Two. Three. And then 
for. So that bolts to the engine that way. So that's hung on the engine like so. You've got one, that's the drive in off the timing cover, off the back of the engine. So drive coming in, drives a pump. And then this one here is a long shaft that drives a water pump that's mounted on the front of the engine. So you've got one shaft here and another shaft straight out the front. So very similar to how the drive shaft for the oil pump on a 5.2 here also drives the water pump on the front. It's just a little bit of a more uh, complicated system because you have these joiners. So this hangs out. It's not that one, that's this one to be fair. This hangs out and then you get these couplers. And then what happens is, as you can see, that was brand new when we rebuilt the engine and it's already started to corrode and they literally rot in place. So we battled getting it off and then that corrosion just grows up the shaft and you can see, look, where the lip seal, the edge of the lip seal has been running. So that's where they start to leak. So we grow the, uh, we clean all that and service that. That one then hangs out the back. You get another coupler and then the long shaft into the back of the water pump which, and thermostat housing, which sits here. Um, but these are a nightmare because they see solid. Uh, they're circlipped on. As you can see on the shaft, there's a circlip groove somewhere. Is it on the wall? Is it on? It's on the timing shaft, isn't it? It sits butt up against this and it's circlip, yes. So it sits butt up against those and then it's circlipped on the other shaft to hold it in place and stop it slipping off. But to be fair, they never slip off, they're seized on. And we've, got, we've had to cut them before down the length of them to release them to get them off. So you've got essentially that inside the pump. That's what it looks like. Right, then that shaft, that gear, sorry, drives the main input for the oil pump. So it looks like that. So then that's one. Then you get, there's one side. And then you get two more then. Like a stove. Essentially sit like that. So that's pressure, that's scavenge. So then that takes the oil in, pressures it, takes it up, pushes it into the block and up through the oil filter housing. Then this lot sucks it out of the sump, the bottom of the crankcase and then pushes it back up through the oil cooler and then back into the oil tank. So that is essentially it, so to speak. So with these then, when they fail, how does that present? Is that quite a common thing? Uh, do you know what? I've never seen one properly fail. Yep. What you would normally see is excessive wear. Um, so we've pulled some apart that have, have, that have had, say like a bearing failure go or crank go, and then you get in the, in the pump, essentially the blades of the pump, you get impregnated material. So you literally get like bits of metal squeezed in and then they're scrapped. So we used to see it a lot on like um, uh, 4G63 oil pumps out of Evos. So you take the oil pump apart and there'd just be like bits of material in basically part of the gear. And that's when you would tell that the pumps junk really. Um, you can obviously get leaking from any of the sections because they're these little like O-rings. I say little O-rings, they're like formed gasket seals. So this is the hardest part of the rebuild is getting hold of those because Lamborghini don't sell them. Um, so we kind of struggle with these. So we have to sort of get normal O-rings and then make them fit the shape. So that's what we do. Um, and then literally we just pressure test the spring so i've got a valve spring test and we just test the tension on the spring which is the um relief pressure relief so at a certain pressure if a pump over pressurizes it will just push back against the spring and lift it off so i've seen a couple of those broken but that would normally give you an ind indication of low oil pressure on a gauge you get gauge oil pressure really low but i've seen spring split before um, but they're a nightmare to get out of the case they're like they season solid normally 
And then just your fixtures and just your fixtures and fittings look go all nasty and corroded and horrible. So we replace all those. So they're the end case bolts. We replace the uh, the nuts, the K nuts or the lock nuts, um, and then we'll put everything through the um, Sonic cleaner, which is like what I cook my soup in. So this is my new big one. So yeah, it's a good little tool. Bloody hell, Carl. <laughs> Trying to work for a little bit, mate. I think he had a curry last I night. I know. <laughs> um, so we've got a little one as well. I don't know whether we've shown that in other videos, but we use it, use it for everything, to be fair. It's bloody good. Little heats up to like 60 degrees. Uh, and then it's like sonic pulses, clean everything. So all that lot will go through it. I'll put the casings through it because, of course, they've been vapor blasted, but there's still a media use. So we'll clean on those out. Uh, new seals. And then literally rebuild it. And pop it back on, eh, mate? So there's a bolt. It wasn't this one, was it a T30? It was a T30, wasn't it? Right. So this is that bolt there, right? Sits exactly like that and mounts into the crankcase, right? So what have we got this side? You've got the oil pump, the oil pipe coming in here. So that comes off this flange and almost up and over, right? So it lives here. And it's got to be an inch and a bit diameter, isn't it? Then you've got a frame rail here, like this, right? And then obviously the engine's like that. So I think Carl spent like a day trying to get a screw out. <laughs> Honest to God, I think we would have been better off taking a motor out. <laughs> yeah, I'm just to point. <laughs> but, so, but this is the difference here, is like Lam Lamborghini, the way Lamborghini do things is just, some, some things are just bizarre. Then, when we went to the 5.2, that replaced that. So the first big thing is, this is what we would call a two port pump. So it's obviously got one pressure port, one scavenge port. Yes, it's got two sets of pumping gears inside the scavenge, but it's, a, what, it's, it's four ports on it, it's easy peasy. This one, it's got one pressure port, which is here. So that supplies pressure into the crankcase, which goes up the front of the block, across the back, through the oil filter housing, and then there are eight scavenge ports. So you can see here, look, you've got one pressure, se one pressure section, and then you can see the body of the pump, look. So you've got two, four, and then another two, and then the pressure at the front here. So the feed comes in, I'll take my gloves off because I'm gonna get dirty, it's brand new. So that's all feed in, so that comes in. I don't know whether you can see much down there to be fair. Can't even turn up my fingers. But then that gear drives those little veins here, which pushes pressure then, takes the oil coming in, pressurizes it, pushes it out that port up into the block. And then these suck the oil. They've got little strainer caps on them and they pull the oil out of the crankcase, send it out through this port up through the oil cooler and back through the tank. Now what we have seen with these is people go and take the rear timing cover off, clean all the gasket off, which is liquid sealant, um, and it blocks the strainer ports. So I've been to look at engines that have seized um, because it runs out of oil. The oil's all sat in a sump because it can't, the pump can't suck these have essentially been blocked by all the liquid gasket and a waste gasket blocking the strainers. So then the, the pump can't scavenge the oil out of the, out of the engine to put it back in a tank for the pressure side to then feed off. So we've seen a couple of those. I've probably seen two or three of those in the last five years. Um, but other than that, they're good pumps. The only thing we do see is, whoop, loose nip, not this seal, but where it joins as a, like a tube with a drive shaft in it that, joins the back of the timing cover and that timing cover seal exactly like the old v10 rs6's leaks the seal goes like plastic and then you get you get oil pump drive seal leak so we do quite a few of those to be fair don't we yeah. a couple, couple of months and then because it's tight <laughs> can't get 
of stuff. Why can't you get quiet workers these days? <laughs> um, and then because this is the leading edge of the pump, we have to drop it off. To get it out properly, you are, we take the thermostat housing off to get it out of the way, and these bolts, so they're aluminium bolts in an aluminium case, and they snap for fun. So we've got three or four water pump housings that we sort of keep serviced, because if we take one of these out, we're gonna snap these screws off. So we'll literally just swap the water pump housing whenever we do that job. Uh, when they get really bad, these ones corrode in as well. So there's some that have got so bad, like trying to get, so that's your thermostat housing, and then that's your water pump housing, right? So you've obviously got one, two, three water ports in, and then this one obviously goes into the front of the block. So to take all the oil pump out, you've got to take the thermostat housing off. Now, if that comes off clean, you're, you're mint, you're away. You can drop the whole thing off, no problems. If any of those snap, you've got to take the water pump cover off. And if any of those four bolts are seized in, oh, it's like, it's shocking. So you're in for a bad day normally when that happens. So there's even some where we've had to essentially like cut a slot down this part of the body to relieve the pressure on the bolt to get the bolt out because that's it you can't buy any of those covers separate that is 3800 quid so if you go snap if you go damage a water pump or thermostat housing that is it you, you're done that comes as part of this so it's like yes we've got old damaged pumps that we've scavenged parts off including like these front covers that we keep service so we've got two on a shelf so if we ever do leaking oil pump seals or aircon compressors you've got to do a v10 aircon compressor this has got to come out and if these have got to come out nine times out of ten we snap bolts on this and there's nothing you could do about it literally go with a quarter of a turn don't they you just pull on it and it's ping but it's because they're aluminium bolts they don't even use steel bolts but, so yeah, just between, and that was five litre, 5.2, overnight, bang. That's how they changed. So, both super reliable, don't get really many problems. But I mean, just look at the, look at the size difference between them. That's more like an old school Ferrari pump. Like a 430, 360 pump. Good stuff. So, a couple of other questions. Go on then. What is that under the uh, car cover behind you? A yellow beetle. Nine nine. Go on, Carl. Nine nine seven. Is it a one or a two? It's got to be a one, isn't it? Because of the age. Yeah. So Juden's just worked his magic. Shiny, shiny. Mm. Have you seen his fancy seats? You may have noticed this was the steering wheel in the manual video. <laughs> <laughs> in the RHGT manual video. Yeah. But yeah, George's been pretty busy lately, to be fair. He's had some nice stuff through. So, yes. What else we got going on? And I've also noticed the top you're wearing. Merch, bro! So it gives a twirl. So, nice Christmas present for a loved one? Yes. Or, or no one? To yourself, maybe? <laughs> yeah, buy yourself a hoodie. Yeah. Or a t-shirt. They're all on the website. Shameless plug. Makes me cringe. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even given Carl one yet. There you go. We know what you're getting for your Christmas now, don't you? It's been quite cool. All right, bud. Well, All right. until the next time. Next time, like and subscribe. <laughs> Tea time. See you later, guys. Cheers, bud. Say bye, Carl. Bye, Carl. <laughs>